Moving on to the last and final segment of today's show, we wanted to get into the very impressive victory on Monday Night Football by the Los Angeles Chargers at SoFi Stadium in Week 4 to close the games out. The Chargers win by a final score of 28 to 24, or excuse me, 28 to 14. This was really a game the Chargers had complete control in from the start of the first half to about midway through the third quarter. Then you thought the Raiders could possibly make a run. A plot twist and part of the uh, craziness of this game was even though it was a Chargers home game, it did feel like a Raiders home game based on the overall amount of noise that their fan base was providing every time the Chargers had the ball. The Chargers legit had to come out in the silent count at home to start a game. And really, that's where I want to dig into the Chargers from that perspective to start the segment off, right? Is over the past couple of years and this team, the Chargers have always had talent, right? They've always had guys like Keenan Allen and Joey Bosa, Derwin James. They always have been a team that looks really good on paper. But over the past couple of years, not only have they failed to come through and win the big game, but just so often they lose games that... You just turn around after they lose and you say, what in the world just happened between fumbling at the goal line and missing game-winning field goals? The Chargers just feel like over the past five years, they've been one of the more unlucky teams in the NFL. Nothing ever seems to go their way. They can never catch a break. And last year, the Chargers decide to draft Justin Herbert. And it's crazy because Justin Herbert even though he was always this big, strong-armed quarterback, there were plenty of people that were worried about him in college as a possible future NFL pro player. But at the same time, you look at it a little further and a little deeper, and you realize that his junior and senior year, Justin Herbert didn't really play with a skill position player that is even close to making the NFL. His offensive coordinator, Marco Arroyo, when you compare everything that he was doing at Oregon compared to what he's doing in the NFL now, it seems pretty clear to me that Oregon didn't really do a good enough job taking advantage of just how great of a skill set Justin Herbert had. And before that Rose Bowl he played in against Wisconsin, which was really the first time I remember watching this kid and saying like, wow, he could be a legit stud. Throughout his college career, he did have a lot of trouble playing in the big games and showing up for the big games. However, you put him in a system with talent. Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, we know the weapons that this Los Angeles Charger team has, combined with the fact that Herbert, in many instances, is a late bloomer. He is a kid that grew up in Eugene. He always wanted to be the starting quarterback for the Oregon Ducks. That was a dream of him for his whole life, and he finally gets there, succeeds, and all of a sudden, he is looking like he could be a top prospect in the NFL draft. It all happened really quickly for a guy that wasn't really offered that many D1 starting jobs coming out of uh, the high school ranks. And Oregon obviously noticed him from Eugene and the rest is history. But Justin Herbert is a smart kid. He was a four-year starter at Oregon. He had a 4.2 GPA as a biology major. A lot of impressive things that you can't really say about many other NFL quarterbacks. And I think when you combine just how well-rounded of a player he is, right, between those, all of those attributes that I've just mentioned that makes Justin Herbert great, you combine that with an elite group of skill position players, an elite defense, and a head coach in Brandon Staley, who I totally understand. He's only coached four games, and his future as an NFL head coach is a little unknown at the moment. He still has a lot to prove. But five years ago, which I know sounds like a long time ago, but in football terms, it's really not that long ago, he was a coach of a D3 team. He was coaching among the D3 ranks. And then he moved his way up within the NFL so quickly, working with guys like Vic Fangio and Sean McVay. And now, all of a sudden, he's the head coach of this Los Angeles Charger team that I believe has one of the more talented rosters in the NFL. And when you have talent like this, one thing that you have to be in order to take advantage and get the most out of that talent is aggressive. 
If you have guys like Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, you know, a good offensive line, the kid Slater you drafted looks like he could be a real good player. Bosa, James, we know the talent that this Charger team has. And he's been aggressive, has Brandon Staley, because he knows that he's willing to win or lose games based on what happens when you put the ball in a guy like Justin Herbert's hands. That's how special of a talent he is. And there have been many times throughout this season already, like in week one against Washington, Herbert was just making and converting third down after third down after third down. And it was clear in that moment that he just was not going to let the Los Angeles Chargers lose that football game. Even last night, the Raiders, their offense does nothing the whole first half. Even though the stadium is all Raider fans, they don't really have that much to cheer about. And then all of a sudden... To start off the second half, the Raiders actually go on a nice little 14-0 run. Carr is hitting Hunter Renfro for a touchdown. Carr is hitting Darren Waller for a touchdown. The Raiders are finally getting a little bit of of a pass rush. And then when it's 21-14, Justin Herbert gets the ball back, and there was never a doubt. He just drives right down the field. The Chargers score a touchdown to make it 28-14, and they never looked back from there. The rest is history. The Chargers' defense was also able to force Derek Carr into throwing an, an interception, which really wrapped up the game. And I've been impressed with the Chargers' fortitude. Keep in mind, the Chargers, I feel bad for them in the sense also that they had a true fan base in San Diego. That is the true home of the Los Angeles Chargers. But for financial reasons, they decided to move, get this new stadium in LA. And let's face it, they don't really have fans. The fact that on the first drive of the game last night, they had to come out and use their hard count because their home stadium was filled with Raider fans. That's got to be pretty demoralizing for not only an NFL team, but a good young team that should have a lot to be excited about. We just spoke about Justin Herbert and how he is probably one of the two or three best young quarterbacks in the NFL. His future is so bright, and it's clear that he's a late bloomer. He's only be only going to be getting better, especially when he's familiar with Brandon Staley's system. And this is what happens. You have a, a, a fan base that is pretty much non-existent in LA, and you have to go out there and use the hard count, silent count, uh, your first drive in your home stadium. Like, that's embarrassing. Like, that's terrible. And still, the Chargers were able to bounce back from the stadium, their own stadium, just being a pro Raider crowd, and they were really able to control the game from start to finish. I know the Raiders had that little drive there. But the Chargers were winning basically this whole game. Justin Herbert on his first drive of the game was absolutely phenomenal. Just hitting third down after third down after third down. And for the Chargers, a team that once again, over the past five years, they've just had from brutal luck. From being moved from San Diego, a place where a lot of their true fans were. And let's be honest, unlike the Raiders, a team that is such a big brand, right? The Raiders have moved to Oakland, to Los Angeles, now to Las Vegas, and their fans are following base. That first Monday night game against the Ravens, first game with fans at uh, the, 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 the death hole at Allegiant Stadium, that was a pretty great atmosphere. That was filled with Raider fans, and you could tell that in Vegas, they care about their football team. That's how much the Raiders mean to them. While in LA, it's the total opposite. There's so many things to do between the Lakers and the Uh, You know, you have the Clippers, you have the Dodgers, you have USC, you have UCLA, you have the Rams in this brand new SoFi Stadium. There's so many things, not even sports. I just mentioned the sports things like let's get into the Hollywood aspect of California and everyone loves to be in L.A. It is the place to be right now. Everyone you talk to says L.A. is the place to be. That's where I want to live going forward. And now the Chargers get lucky because they have a quarterback who might just be so good where they are going to be young kids growing up in LA who go to Charger games because no one else wants to go and tickets are so cheap and their dad takes them to the game and those kids are going to watch Justin Herbert play and they're going to be like, wow, that's who I want to be when I grow up and I'm going to become a Charger fan because this kid is so good and he's so fun to watch. And Brandon Staley, I mean, look, if you would have asked Sean McVay, before the beginning of the 2020 season, that the linebacker coach you just hired from Vic Fangio's staff on the Chicago Bears was going to be your defensive coordinator. And he's a guy that 
really no one else knows about, but Sean McVay took a chance on him, and then a year later, you lose him. I don't think Sean McVay expected that because Brandon Staley was going to do so well that he would automatically be on any other NFL team's head coaching radar. The Chargers wanted to make a move. They got him. And so far, I understand it's only been four games, but Brandon Staley looks like he could be a legit NFL head coach. He already has total trust and total faith in Justin Herbert that on fourth and threes in a big game on Monday Night Football against the only undefeated team left in the AFC, Brandon Staley was like, I trust Justin Herbert so much that I'm going to be willing to give him the ball to make a play in such a big spot in the game as a second-year player because he's that special. And I think the Chargers are a team from top to bottom. They are so well-rounded. I can't wait next week. Browns Chargers in LA. The Browns have a low-key, very popular fan base all across the country. And I can guarantee you there are going to be a lot of Browns fans in the building at SoFi Stadium next week against the Chargers. But those two teams are very similar in the sense that from top to bottom, they're both very talented. I think I kind of like the Chargers more, though, just because of their quarterback. His ceiling is through the roof. And the scary part is he's so young, he's only getting better. And if you're a Dolphin fan, I hate to bring this up, but taking Tua over him, that could be a decision that your team really regrets for a long time going forward. Even Washington taking Chase Young over Justin Herbert. And Chase Young is a stud. He was my prediction to win Defensive Player of the Year. Washington would love to have that pick back and take Justin Herbert. Same thing with the Lions taking Jeff Okuda. How about the Giants taking Andrew Thomas? Dolphins taking Tua. There have been plenty of teams that passed up on Justin Herbert. And for the first time in a long time, the Chargers, a team where everything has really gone the opposite way they have wanted over the last couple of years. They finally find a way to get lucky and get a quarterback in the 2020 draft that looks like he could be the next young star in the NFL going forward. He's already went into Arrowhead in one, beats the Raiders on Monday Night Football. The future is so bright for the Chargers and Justin Herbert. He's only getting better. I think there's a good chance we see Kansas City and the Chargers built around these two quarterbacks as one of the best rivalries in the NFL over the next five years going forward. I can't wait to see what Justin Herbert could do.